Well, looks like it's time for my scheduled service. But before we start though, let's make sure we are properly prepared. A well-equipped toolbox will definitely impress the ladies, but more importantly, it's a one-time investment as you will use them over and over again. Well, if you're going to do your own servicing, you'll definitely need some basic tools such as spark plug opener, an oil filter opener, a couple of spanners, and of course, some screwdrivers. We also have a compact hydraulic jack over here, a container, and an old rag and you'll definitely need enough space to work in. As long as it's not too cramped, you're good to go. Remember, safety comes first. When working on the car, always apply the parking brake and a tyre wedge. And if it's a manual transmission, put it into first gear. Now that we are ready, we can start our project. First thing, replacing the air filter. Now the air filter makes sure that clean air goes into the engine. Now if your air filter is dirty, the engine will lose power and you'll end up using more fuel. Now to change an air filter, well it's a straightforward job but you just have to make sure that you get the correct air filter for your car and to do that, the owner's manual will help you. The air filter is kept in the air filter housing and should be changed every 12 months or 20,000 kilometers. This is how it usually looks like, a black plastic case with metal clips with a big black tube going into it. Now this is your old air filter. Pay attention on how it sits in the housing so that you'll know how to fit the new one in. Now it's interesting to find out what is clogging up your air filter and causing your engine to lose its power. Now before fitting in the new one, clean it up a bit as you'll never know what you might find. Then replace it with a new air filter. Again, gentleness is the key. If it doesn't slot in right, you're probably doing it wrong because you'll also find it hard too close to top. Well, there you have it. There's a new air filter in there. There may be no noticeable difference in power delivery, but at least you know that your engine is breathing clean air. Next week, we'll look at spark plugs and how easy it is to change them with just a bit of sweat. We all know what the price of petrol has been like lately. And although it has been steady in Malaysia for the past year, everybody agrees that it will eventually go up again. What will you do? And what are the alternatives? The popularity of hybrid cars has risen in tandem with the price of oil. Yet, they are recognized as only a midway point to the ultimate target. Cars that won't depend on that pesky, fickle price petrol at all. However, what the alternative will be is yet to be determined. Two of the more popular options being developed are battery-powered technology or fuel cells. So what's the difference? Both are driven by electric motors, but it's what powers them that's what's different. BMW's Mini E is an electric version of the popular Mini and has just undergone field tests in the US and the UK. To charge it up, you just plug it into your house electrical supply through a special charger. It takes between 4 to 12 hours to fully charge the car with a range of about 150 kilometers. Top speed, an electronically limited 150 kilometers per hour. Fuel cells, on the other hand, react hydrogen with oxygen to produce water. This releases energy and is converted to an electric current. Mercedes is experimenting with using fuel cells via their F-cell. Their latest version, the B-Class, is a concept vehicle with a tank that stores hydrogen at 5,000 pounds per square inch. That's enough gas to give it a range of a whopping 400 kilometers. Although both generate electricity, the two technologies are incompatible and each comes with their individual strengths and weaknesses. Batteries are easy to recharge since they work directly off the mains. Fuel cell vehicles have a longer range, but the hydrogen needs to be replenished regularly. Not a cheap option right now. And they are fragile too. Not too good if you're planning to drive on bumpy roads. There are other alternatives. BMW's Hydrogen 7 also uses hydrogen as an alternative fuel. However, instead of passing it through a fuel cell, the gas is directly injected into the air intake manifold. 
With some help from designer Maestre Gugiaro, our local boys Proton and Lotus has unveiled its concept hybrid car, the Eco Mobility Advanced Solution or Proton Amas, designed by Lotus Engineering, engages a fully electrical drive system and comes in three variants. However, here's the harsh truth. These technologies are still quite expensive and that petrol in Malaysia is still cheap. But for those who feel that no cost can be attached to saving the environment, the future is clearly green. But the million dollar question, will Malaysians take up the challenge to go green? Well, that's for you to decide. Coming up next, the BMW 7 Series Diesel, on the road and on track.